Hey guys, and welcome back to Posh Cotney TV and for another episode of Living the Dream. My name's Liam Norval, and today's guest is a rugby world legend. The most capped Welsh scrum half ever. Five British and Irish Lions caps, four Six Nations titles, and a natural born winner. His name is Mike Phillips, and let's get straight to it. I'm delighted to have an old friend of mine and uh, his name is Mike Phillips. People will know him as the most capped scrum half Wales has ever seen. Mike, how are you? Very good, thanks. Very good. So you're out in Dubai at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, I've lived here now for uh, three years. I'm currently in my uh, son's bedroom because my other son's sleeping in the living room and there's a lot going on in the house. So I dived in here. So as you can tell, the um, teddy's in the background. I love it. I love it. Look, Mike, let's get straight into it, okay? So this podcast, Living the Dream, is all about people like yourself that have lived their dream. And our listeners are really keen to find out how you got there, what you did, what you sacrificed, um, what it was like to be at the top. So let's, let's go back to you as a boy playing rugby. Did you always want to be a rugby player or was there other, other goals and dreams in your mind or was, it, or was you focused on being uh, an international rugby player? No, I think, I think I just generally loved sport as a whole, you know, and um, obviously being Welsh, rugby is the number one sport in Wales and you can't, um, you can't get away from it. Uh, it's everywhere. So it's, it's like a religion in Wales. And yeah, I think that was my ultimate, my first goal, or my my first dream in life was to play, play for my country. And um, yeah, I kind of just chased it along the way. Obviously, when you when you're young, when I was in school, it was uh, I wasn't always the best in school or anything like that. But you know, as I got older, then I guess I started developing and then um, become much much better. And I, I guess the the dream dream sort of became reality then, and I could see a pathway and. Uh, I actually, you know, went for it then um, fully to sort of make it professionally. Yeah. So, so you're a 20 year old man, uh, and you make your debut for Scarlets. What was that like? Yeah, well, it was a team I supported as a kid, so I, I was very young, and I'd come from nowhere really. I think I didn't get any age grade caps, so I was I was picked up very late. So, one minute I'm playing village rugby, you know, where I'm from in Whitland down there, and then all of a sudden I'm you know, playing on TV and with the players I watched on television and looked up to and, and admired. So it happened very quickly to, for me and my first Welsh cap came very quickly as well. So it kind of, you know, life kind of turned on its head um, overnight. And um, yeah, it, it was just amazing to, to sort of uh, to get there and to, you know, start my professional career. Did you lose focus at any time there? You know, if you're saying you, you was quite late to develop into the game and, and, and get your chance... I mean, did you ever think, you know, this isn't, this isn't going to work? Did you ever lose doubt? No, not really. I think, um, no, not lose doubt. I think I always persevered, always play, uh, you know, played well and, and backed myself. And um, I always kind of, in the back of my mind, always knew that I would sort of get there. I had quite quietly confident, not shouting about it, but I kind of felt as if, you know, I knew I could make a difference every time I was on a rugby field. And I just kind of felt, okay, you know, one day it's going to happen for me. And um, yeah, I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind, you know, I, I was just quite confident about my rugby ability. You know, if you asked me, you know, am I, can I sing? No, I can't. Can I act? No. But can I play rugby? Yeah, you know, it was something I'm good at. So I would back myself in that, you know, 100%. So then 2003, you get your, your first Welsh cap and you score a try. Yeah, it was against uh, the mighty uh, Romania. So we all know <laughs> the titans uh, of the rugby union game. <laughs> yeah, you know the world's greatest. But no, it was, oh, it was great. You know, it was uh, it was a World Cup um, sort of friendly match, and uh, in preparation for the World Cup in two thousand and three. And yeah, just to um, look, it did. It wasn't the, the the actual fixture that I would would have dreamt of playing for my first cap. But you know, still, it's, it's the first cap, and it's. Um, yeah, it, it was amazing. You know, I remember changing my uh, my message on my phone. With those Nokia phones. It was like as soon as I turned it on, it was one cap, one win, one try. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> that is so uh, you as well. <laughs> uh, but the boys, the boys love that one, and uh, I just had to make sure I got the two caps then because uh, you don't want to end up on one. Um, good, well, you, you definitely went on to you definitely went on to more caps. I mean, uh, ninety nine caps in the end. Uh, was you was you gutted to not hit the hundred? Well, it, it's um, it's ninety four for Wales, and it's. Um, five appearances for five the Lions. For the Lions so, yeah. Um, yeah, it would have been nice, but oh, look, I mean, if you'd have told me when I was a nine year old kid that I'd have all those experiences and have all those caps, I mean, I'd have, yeah, I'd have taken it all day long. So, um, you know, probably it was the right time for me to finish. You know, I, I think I gave everything, got everything out of myself. So, um, no, I don't, I don't look at that as, as anything really. So, um, you know, I'm just grateful that I I played there for so long. I think I was in the Welsh squad for like 13 years. So, uh, you know, yeah, it takes a lot out of you mentally and physically. And I think that I, you know, got everything out of myself and uh, added a lot of value to the Welsh team. I mean, it, you did suffer with injuries as well. So it's, it's a phenomenal achievement to hit 99 overall. And uh, you, you mentioned 13 years and it took a massive toll on your body. What was it like? Um, getting injured as a, as a top sports star, was it quite a lonely experience at times? Yeah, really lonely, I think. And I, it was something that I was never sort of, I was never ever injured, injured at all. I was, a lot of players pick up, you know, the odd two, two three weeks sort of injuries and they're out and then, and then you know, you're on the side and you're getting better. And, uh, I never experienced any of that. It was, my first injury was an ACL and I was out for nine months. So it was, uh, it was a big, um, yeah, I, to be honest with you, I didn't deal with it very well. Um, uh, kind of lost the way a little bit, you know, it sort of perhaps didn't knuckle down as, as hard as I should have, but, you know, got back in the end and, um, you know, it's tough mentally because you're on your own, you're, uh, you're away from the group, you've got your own schedule and it's, um, yeah, it's tough, but um, managed to sort of get back and, yeah, now the knees, well, the knees, yeah, perfect and uh, came back very, pretty strongly after you know from that experience really let's go back to your rugby career so as any young boy growing up their dream would be to play in the six nations and be capped by the british lions so let's talk about the six nations first how many did you pl- play in, in the end was it 13 um no it wouldn't be 13 i think i won um Let's just talk about the wins then. How many did you win? Uh, <laughs> well, technically, as part of three Grand Slams and one Six Nations title win, so uh, four. But yeah, one of them I didn't even get off the bench. But in 2005, <laughs> but I'm still claiming that one. Still got the medal. Um, yeah. So no. Um, yeah, they, they. You know, it's one of the biggest sporting, you know, events in the year. You know, it's um, it's huge, and uh, yeah, it's. it's uh, it's all about momentum. The tournament is if you get off to a winning start, you know, you're in a great place to sort of win it, really. I know it sounds uh, crazy, but um, yeah, it's an amazing uh, time of the year just after Christmas. You know, as a kid, I remember watching it. It was, you know, the whole of Wales is, is fixated on it, you know, whether it's in bars or restaurants or, you know, people's homes and clubs. So to be part of it just so many times and to be successful in it as well, I guess, you know, it was a great experience. Is it fair to say your most memorable game in the Six Nations was the 2008 uh, where you scored the winning try against England at Twickenham, the first time Wales had won there in 20 years? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a huge experience. Um, yeah, that was uh, pretty special because as a kid growing up watching Wales against England, you know, we used to kind of get battered every time, basically. So um, first half, things weren't going very well. And I thought, oh, here we go. I'm just part of another uh, loss up in Twickenham and, and yeah, the boys, we managed to turn it around second half and the score was, uh, was pretty special. So that was nice. And, um, but we beat, we, you know, in my career, I think I beat England six times in my career, I would say. <laughs> so I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> was that the, was that always the, the game you look forward to the most uh, against England? Um, yeah, I think it's a big, big rivalry, but I think, um, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, I mean, and a lot of Welsh people just want to be England, and and that's, you know, I think it's yeah, I, I get it, but I think, I think my generation, we kind of changed that. And I think it was about, well, it's, you know, it's not just about winning one game. We want to be, we want to try and win every game, you know. So, um, 
you know, I think we raised the standards in that sense. You know, a lot of um, Welsh fans are just purely, you know, they're still the same. If they beat England, they're happy, you know. So, but, you know, for me, I, I you know, wanted to win every single game and try and be the very best in the world. Uh, where, you know, um, you know, we didn't beat New Zealand, but, you know, it was still a case of going out there and, and believing you can go out there and achieve something. And then the British Lions. So, how many tours did you do there? Three, was it uh, was five, two. five tours? Two, oh, no, sorry. Two tours. Two, two tours, five caps, of course, yeah. Yeah. And, and you won. Should have, the... should, have, should have been five tours. Yeah, it should have been. Yeah, you was unlucky there. <laughs> you, uh, you, you won. Did you win player of the tournament on one? I should have been. Um, but I, I think, wasn't studied. Is this, was it Mike Phillips gave himself player of the tournament? Is that what it was? <laughs> no, no, technically I was the, um, there's an in-house one, which is not official which can't really be talked about. But then, um, yeah, I, I wasn't studying to be a doctor. So, yeah, the rugby world is quite, um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it went to someone else. What's it like going, going to places like South Africa and uh, Australia and, and going up against the best of the Southern Hemisphere? Yeah, the, the 2009 Lions store was brilliant because it was South Africa at the time, like, like they're now and like the boys will be going out next year, they were world champions. So they were the best team in the world. Uh, you know, they had an unbelievable squad. Um, you know, going out playing in their backyard was just um, something really special, you know. So um, amazing tour. Personally, I, you know, was really chuffed the way I played. Um, and we, but we just fell a bit short, which was you know, devastating. But, the tour, the the tour on the whole was just unbelievable, and you know to wear, the, um, you know, to represent the Lions is is the you know is the pinnacle really. You're the best of the best, you know, best in England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. So um, it's something really unique and special, really. It's got a massive history, which uh, yeah, which needs to keep going. Who was the best coach you've ever played under? Um, I would say Sean Edwards. Really? Um, yeah, he was phenomenal. I think um, more about the personal touch, I think, as well. Uh, he was very detailed and he used to think outside the box a lot, which was great. Um, and But more about the personal touches that he did, um, like the little, sounds crazy, but, you know, little messages when you were injured um, or when something bad was going on in your life or maybe a bit of misfortune or whatever it may be, you'd always be there. Uh, in it with that sort of caring phone call or text or whatever, um, and I think that you know that goes a long way. You know, it's not just um, you know. I think sometimes you know, you know, rugby players like everyone, we're all people, and we get down, and it's you know, it's about the relationships really. Which um, if you've got strong bonds between coaches and players, I think the players end up playing harder for you, and you know, you get more success. So um, I thought he was very good at. Um, but I can only speak for myself. Um, you know, with that, I thought he was, he was great. We're friends and, and I know your personality, but on the pitch, sometimes people would say, you know, Mike's always getting in the opposition's faces. That was part of your tactic, wasn't it? I mean, as a player, if you, if you, if you was getting coached as well, would you need almost special attention? No, I think all that, I think that was a bit of bravado and I think it was a bit of me getting myself up, up to the game as well. Um, you know, just trying to get my juices fired in a bit more and probably a bit of nerves in there as well and a bit of everything, you know. So, um, yeah, but also if I could see someone on the opposition that was having a bit of a bad game, I'd, you know, chip up with a bit of a comment. But yeah. um, <laughs> you'd have to be selective though. Uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, but I think it was just more about me getting myself up for the game, um, you yeah, know, making sure that I was really on that edge of, of uh, I don't know, of being physical and uh, aggressive, but also you have to be really cool, cool and calm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough skill that in itself. So, I've asked you about the best coach. Who was the best player you ever played with, and why? Um, I think. In Wales, it would have been someone like Shane Williams. He was just phenomenal. He could create uh, an opportunity from nothing, beat you know five or six defenders. Um, but probably I got to play with um, Dan Carter in, in when I played in France, and 
he's my age. We played age grade against each other and stuff. But um, yeah, he was just uh, a different class, really, on the ball. So much time um, and the way he is as a, as a as a person as well off the field. He's, he's a he's a top top man and um, he's a good good bloke off the field. He's probably um, you know he's a World Cup winner multiple times. He's a uh, world player of the year. You know, he's just uh, pure class, really. Well, there, there isn't a better player in the world than Dan Carter, is there? And I, I, what, was your, what was your life I, I, like? I, I'm probably slightly better, that's all. Well, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> I mean, apart from you, obviously. What was it like living in uh, France? Because you was there for a number of years. Yeah, I was there for five years. It's, um, it's, it's a lot different to, you know, how they do things in Wales, perhaps. Um, you know, slightly a bit more old school and, um, you know, with it in the way they think and, and things in the way they go about their working week. Um, but it's, it was an amazing experience. I mean, it's given me everything. I met my wife there, um, you know, two kids now. So um, amazing experience. Get to play with, obviously, the French players, but also, you know, like I say, the, the, the boys from New Zealand, the South Africans, um, all the island boys, you know, it's, it's an amazing league. And it's it really is a tough, tough league. So uh, it's a good test um, physically, mentally, um, and it, it was just an amazing experience, really. And you know, we played the final of the Top Cat Doors in Barcelona in front of ninety nine thousand people. You know, so it's um, it was special. We won that game, so um, to win the title, so that was you know, it's just unbelievable. Really. Well, it sounds like it. incredible stories and, and experience. I, I want to ask you, if you was a young boy now in Carmarthen uh, or any town in the UK, uh, what would your best advice be for, look, they, sh- they want to be a rugby player. They might not have, the, they might not be, have a privileged background. How do they, what do they need to do? What do they need to focus on to, to try and give themselves the best opportunity? Well, I think it's, you know, you've got to have belief in yourself. And I think if, you know, if you have got a dream, you know, no, one, no one's got the right to knock anybody else's dream. You know, it's, it's your dream. And, and, you know, I guess only you yourself can make it happen. I, I, you can't be dependable on, on other people. I think, you know, other people will tell you you can't do things. And there's enough people out there who will give you negative comments. You've got to have a real positive mindset and, and believe in yourself and trust yourself and, you know, and then work hard, obviously, and, um, you know, do the graft. I mean, it's simple. I mean, all the most successful people in the world, you know, they work work extremely hard. So, but they, I think they've got a belief in themselves and, you know, they don't, you, you know, you can't listen to negativity and, um, you know, it's your dream. So you should, you know, you should go for it. And and what would you say was the was the key to your success? What what was the driving force? What what motivated you the most? Well, I had no other option really. I think I had to um, I had to be successful in rugby because I wasn't particularly great in school. Um, you know, I got to university, but I think I, I dropped out. And for me, you know, every 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 game was you know I had to prove myself. I felt as if I had to prove myself as if I deserve to be there and you know produce top performances uh because i wanted to be a success and you know i wanted to you know have a nice life really well you know as as good as i possibly could so um yeah it was all about working hard and, and making sure that every time i've gone to feel i proved myself um you know and i wanted to be the very best i could be do you miss it now no 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 i don't miss it now because um it's the body can only do so much, you know. I mean, yeah, you, your mind wonders. You think, oh, yeah, I could still, you know, go out there. But you know, your body is is. I did eleven. I run eleven miles for charity the other night. I mean, I, I, I mean, I walked off of it. It was, uh, it was, <laughs> it was so hard. So I mean, it is a tough game. It's, um, it is physical, but it's an amazing game. It's got great values. I think sometimes it gets a bit of a bad rep in the press, you know, with with how physical it is, but rugby in terms of its values and what it teaches young kids, um, you know, it's second to none really, you know, all, all, you know, it's about honesty, hard work, you know, 
um, discipline, and it's you know it is an amazing an amazing sport to play. Um, thank you for that, Mike. That was incredible. Um, let's talk about what's what you're doing now. So you you mentioned that you've got a beautiful family now, two kids, and and you're living in Dubai. I know you're doing your sports punditry as well. Um, but what else are you working on? Yeah, so I basically, um, well, all what's going on in the world now, uh, it's been tough. I did have a rugby academy, just things on hold, really. So waiting to build that back up uh, and build that back up here in Dubai. Uh, currently doing sort of small group coaching and one-on-one coaching. Um, but yeah, I mean, planning on really, you know, being more in the schools um, whenever things get back to normal. Uh, also other things going on you know a lot of TV work going on uh, and a few bits and bobs on the side so yeah trying to um, do a bit of everything really and try and keep busy as much as possible and you know be active and yeah just get myself out there really fantastic Mike I won't keep you any longer thank you so much uh, for coming on Living the Dream the Posh Cotney podcast Uh, and when you're in London next we need to get together I I miss seeing your face brilliant it's a great face man (laughs) 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 Mike Mike, Mike, aka the Messi of rugby (laughs) Uh, thank you so much enjoy the rest of your day and speak soon thanks mate thanks for having me cheers